I decided I wanted to go into the Marine Corps because there was a Marine who lived around the corner from us. This man was nothing but pride. And I knew that's what I wanted in my life. And um, at that time in my life and in the history of this country, blacks could not get in the Marine Corps. Marfa Point Camp was a segregated camp uh, where black men were garrisoned. Nobody ever heard of it, nobody ever knew about it, and nobody ever knew it existed. There were only two boot camps in the Marine Corps for 99.9% .9 of the Marines. My drill instructor, he was the one that told us that if you're gonna be a black Marine, you're gonna have to be better than anybody else. Better. When I went in, actually, we only had a few non-commissioned officers. And one of the officers uh, wound up having Montfort Point named after him, Hashmark Johnson. He didn't have to say anything. Just, just look in his eyes and stare. You, you knew what he meant. <laughs> and you just waited for him to speak. Well, you were subjected to very intense training. And you feel like a survivor. In fact, you survived the training, and now you're a officially a Marine. You uh, felt as though you had accomplished something within yourself. You know, Buffalo Soldier, Tuskegee Airmen, all this, and the Marfa Point Marines, you know, it's the same thing. We African Americans were demanding the right to be on the battle lines to fight. We wanted to prove that we were just as good as a infantryman as anybody else. Uh, I found myself uh, as a corporal, uh, and uh, I took over a squad. We ended up on the island of Iwo Jima. Uh, I landed on D-Day, incidentally, so when we got to Iwo Jima, we had a, it was a city of ships. One of the most unbelievable sights you want to see. Like all the landing crafts were going around in a circle, forming a line to come in when waves to the beach. First of all, the waves and the stand that were coming in against the banks that were ferocious and sometimes covered you up. That was in my mind. But I would see my brothers and sisters again there. They were just pitch black. Uh, when the Japanese fired their weapons, they get a good idea of where they were located. From out of that, there were two of my squad that earned both the Silver Star and the Bronze Star. It was still segregated up until uh, the Korean War. Marine Corps was one of the first branches of the military to start to integrate. Now I was the only black in outfit, 31 Marines, only one black, okay. They wouldn't say a word to me. So we, we get to Incheon, now these guys now begin to warm up to me because they realize that we depend on each other. Well, our lives depend on one taking care of the other. So we get to Chosen Reservoir, and the Chinese had cut us off completely. So now we got to get ourselves out of there. Now the worst part of that is it's 35 below zero. And we ran out of food, ran out of water, ran out of ammo. My boot would literally froze to my foot. When my boot came off, part of my foot came off with it. So all, all my toes, my right foot are gone. The training I got in boot, at, at Mother Point saved my life. We were coming home from overseas and we stopped at the railroad station and we saw all these signs. No color allowed, white only. And we took all them signs down. And we told them, we didn't go to war for the United States to come back to see this. I wasn't drafted. I volunteered to wear that uniform. And I respected the uniform. And I had hoped <laughs> my fellow citizens would have respected it also, but that didn't necessarily happen. I have a friend who um, was on his way home after boot camp. He was sitting there having 
been passed over by two buses when suddenly a big burly white Marine came in. And he came over and he said, gee, I didn't realize that there were black folks in the Marine Corps now. He said, well, welcome. He said, how long have you been in? He asked him. He said, and he said, by the way, why are you waiting over here? Why aren't you getting on the bus? And he said, um, every time the bus comes in, the white folks are put on first and I can't get on. With that, the white Marine called out, who's in charge of this bus station? And the manager of the bus station came over and he said, you see that Marine over there? He said, when the next bus comes out of here, I want to see his butt on one of those seats. This is 1943. The commonality, the common brotherhood between Marines was shown at that, at that time. During World War II and afterwards, the highest rank that a black person could go was um, to that of Six Striper Sergeant in the, in the military. Captain Frederick C. Branch became the first um, officer in November 10th, 1945, after the war had ended. Then years later, uh, we had uh, warrant officers, Annie Grimes, she's the third black woman to come in the Marine Corps. She's the first to be commissioned. People like me, uh, other minorities in the Marine Corps, have the opportunity to be a part of this organization because of their sacrifices. Being a drill instructor myself, I, I never forgot the struggles that they went through. The sky's the limit of things that I can do because of these Marines. It's a different attitude, a complete different attitude. And um, back in the days when <laughs> we were coming along, I don't believe that would ever happen.